you need. The problem is you can't just walk into any hospital across the state and find a nurse trained in the SANE program right now, but that is changing. Thanks to the tireless efforts of one woman from West Seattle, there is now federal funding that increases nationwide access to trained nurses who can perform sexual assault exams. The Spotlight's Hannah Kim is here with the story. When I talk about systems that harm people. Leah Griffin is a rape survivor. Really, sexual violence is not being prosecuted in a way that has a meaningful impact on public safety. Griffin says the man who raped her in 2014 was never prosecuted because she was turned away from a Seattle hospital that didn't do rape kits. Out of a thousand rapes, the Rape and Incest National Network estimates that 0.5% of those rapes result in a perpetrator spending even a day in jail. The shock turned into anger, which morphed into determination. So it's been a, a lot of work and a really long journey. She began to tell anyone who would listen yeah. to her story. And I, I, I understand that. Eventually, it traveled to Senator Patty Murray. When Leah first told me this happened to her, I could hardly believe it. And the two would start working together on legislation. A rape kit is not just a box of swabs. It is a multi-hour long process that requires the collection of DNA evidence, that requires photograph photographic evidence, uh, that requires a lot of things of nurses that nurses don't typically do. Meaning it's expensive. Nurses have to be trained not only on how to gather forensic evidence, but also how to give expert testimony if a case goes to court. Evergreen Health in Kirkland says they've invested in sexual assault nurse examiners, or SANES but they know many other hospitals and clinics don't have access. For adult survivors, it's ideal to get an exam within the first 120 hours of an assault. And the programs are so few and far between that so many people have to travel long distances to get those services. According to this 2016 study provided to the legislature, the exact number of SANES is unknown, but it points out a deep divide between rural and urban areas in Washington, saying at that time, the 1.5 million rural county residents were at a disadvantage. Griffin says she's had people she doesn't even know reach out to her, desperate for advice. To say, I need help, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm in the ER. I've been waiting for hours, what should I do? And uh, the idea that people are reaching out to me instead of having a system in place to adequately treat people is, is wrong. But for the first time, Griffin can say things are about to get better after all these years. It's about seven years. That's a long time. Turns out it's really hard to pass federal legislation. <laughs> but, but you did it. But we did it. And How does it feel? It's the achievement of a lifetime. It is a lot of work to be a person in Seattle doing everything that I can to tell my story, to amplify the stories of other community members. In March of this year, Congress passed provisions of the Survivors Access to Supportive Care Act, and with it, around $150 million over five years will be going to expand SANE programs across the country. Everyone should know that during an unimaginably traumatic time, they can get compassionate care from well-trained providers. We've got a lot done. One local woman's pain channeled into action, now leading to nationwide access. Now, for the first time, we're gonna have national standards of care in hospitals to ensure that when a survivor comes in, they're taken care of. So Hannah, now that the legislation is passed, what's next? So the next step will be to allocate the funds and it's gonna be done on a competitive basis. We don't have an exact breakdown because they haven't done that part yet. So for example, we don't know how much say Harborview versus Evergreen Health is going to get compared to say other hospitals in other parts of the country. But again, David, $151 million doled out over five years. This seems like a no brainer. Why did this take so long? So David, the reality is that, you know, to pass any federal legislation, it's complicated and it takes a lot of lobbying. And in this issue, it seems like awareness was lacking in many ways because Leah was telling me that she'd come across people who just did not know that rape kits were not readily available at many hospitals. And also you find that policy follows along with cultural trends. And I say that because Leah says that before the Me Too movement, a lot of people dismissed her story, but after the Me Too movement, she says people would actually listen to her.